Shut up and sit down. Alright guys, I'm Dodge, this is Big Mac's Workshop and Paint Studio and today we're painting the Catan Deceiver and we're going to paint it in a variety of different ways um, I didn't want to do the original one, although I may come back to that and do it at some point for you So, what I've started with is the Vallejo Black Primer, as always and then I'm going to use Pale Grey Blue by Model Color to start putting in some pre-highlights You, uh, you may notice later on that um, a lot of it changes off camera because I wasn't happy with it. Um, I was really mucking about with some crazy ideas on this thing, seeing what I can do. And trying to learn some new techniques for myself as well. Me and Andy are trying to get away from the repetition on the channel. Um, there's quite a lot of that, using the same colours for metallics, etc. You know, stuff like that. Um, so we're trying to do some different stuff and learn something for ourselves as well. So we'll just get this pre-shade down here and um, the next colour will be Amanthia Red by Model Colour. And if you've seen the thumbnail that's now changed, you'll be like, why are you using this? Well this is actually on for most of the uh, most of the video. Um, because I didn't like the end result when I'd finished. Um, it took took away too much from everything else. So you don't have to do the amount for your red, but if you watch the whole video, there's so many different colour techniques in this, you can just pick the ones you want and uh, use them for your, for your entire palette. I uh, ended up doing the whole face and the chest, that sort of amount for your orangey red colour. Now this is a mix of Army Painter Blue Tone and Model Air Metallic Gun Metal. I wanted to show you the actual uh, colour in the pot because uh, the... Um, Army paint a blue tone is actually an ink, which means it doesn't really um, taint the paint as much. You know, like a uh, Games Workshop wash would, it just adds a uh, slight colour to it. Which is pretty cool because it still looks like a metallic colour um, once the ink's put in. I do apologise for this uh, video being late, it was supposed to be out yesterday, but um, with Andy hasn't been in most of the week so um, I'm running around trying to do everything and it's more than a one man operation. I'm just going to give that a, a nice coat of a uh, army painter red and model air metallic gun metal. I uh, do go away from using the airbrush quite soon, um, I just wanted to get a, a base coat that was nice and smooth. Now I'm going to add uh, like five drops of model air metallic steel. No. Uh, model air metallic steel with five drops of blue tone we're just adding blue tone into all our uh, silver and metallic paints here you can always do this by hand guys if you want to even if you're using the model air metallics that are designed for an airbrush by hand they still go on relatively smooth we also found with this video it was um, quite difficult to get it to focus a lot of the time because it was so shiny and now we're just going to use Army paint a blue tone and medium on its own. Um, it looked pretty blue to me, but uh, it wasn't showing up on camera for you guys, so I decided to tone that down a little bit more. And what we're doing is we're not really using this as a wash, we're going to start painting each individual thing. We're using it more of a, as a glaze. You're going to find us using a lot of these blue colours and uh, blending those into the silvers to just tone the silver the colour we want. Next up, I'm going to start highlighting with Model Air Metallic Steel again, just on its own. And this is just a uh, small layer brush by Games Workshop. A lot of ch This model went through a lot of changes while making this video. And at the moment it looks relatively smooth and, uh, and pretty decent. Um, but it wasn't what I was going for, I kept changing everything on it. Um, I don't know. You let me know, uh, you guys let me know what you think about it really, because um, again I was just testing out some new techniques on this model, rather than sticking to what I already knew. And another army paint, a blue tone glaze to uh, blend all that together. One of the things I wanted to do was when I put like um, the galaxy sort of pattern on the ribbons was to uh, blend those in with Games Workshop metallics, because they're quite pigmenty anyway. And I, th I thought maybe the, uh, if you really water it down, maybe the tiny bits of pigment would work as stars. But I just didn't get around to doing that for this particular model, as it already had a lot going on and I tried a lot of different techniques. 
And then I'm going to just wash in the Amanthia Red again by model color just to make sure it stays in those recesses. The idea was to have the um, Catan sort of, it's a, it's a star god, or it's a god that eats stars. So I wanted sort of um, collapsing suns, etc., on it and a, a galaxy sort of ribbon, which are all techniques I've never tried before myself, but uh, I thought the concept was pretty cool. Also wanted to have um, energy building up in its uh, arms so it looks like it's actually firing energy at people which uh, I thought would be pretty cool and this is Wolf Grey by Game Air I can't really give you a reason as to why I was using Wolf Grey except it's um, a really light bluish grey and if you water it down and glaze it over the metallics um, you can actually use it to blend metallics together or over metallics and it doesn't really look out of place so it's kind of useful to know um, and I started using it quite often on this model Dragon off nightshade and medium was then uh, painted into the recesses as you can see I'm not washing everything else I'm just painting that into the deepest recesses and if it goes on a bit too strong you just clean your brush off and you just feather it out a bit And um, yeah, that forearm to like forearm to the rest of the arm, that's going to get glazed over a lot of times to blend it together. So it looks like the energy is coming from the center outwards. Now I'm going to use some more colors that I've never really used. This is Techless Blue by Games Workshop. You can see that's a pretty much a wash consistency and we're going to start blending that back and forth. Well, you could use this technique that I've done on the uh, hands for anything where you want a uh, energy source. But I will do a video at some point on uh, power weapons. I'll probably do a paint palette on uh, power weapons, actually. That'd be pretty cool. Um, six different ways to do power weapons or six different colours for it. Just got to find six power weapons, really. I'm now we're using Lothorn Blue by Games Workshop. Again, glazing that in. You can see that those layers starting to build up, so it looks like um, it goes from the bluey metallic to a really powerful, warm sort of energy blast, which is, which I was quite happy with that bit. In fact, I ended up carrying that on on most of the model. I even carried it on on the uh, feet slightly, as you can tell. Now we're going to use Temple Guard Blue to start re-highlighting that. Even though we put down the Wolf Grey to begin with, most of that's now been covered. Um, it just gave us a nice surface to uh, work on with uh, all the other blues and it worked really well underneath for the entire transition helped the metallics blend from metallic to uh, the non-metallic colors that we've got now I've run out of Games Workshop paints that are bright enough so I'm mixing Temple Guard Blue with Wolf Grey by Game Air like I said Wolf Grey is going to be a Pretty constant one in this palette, and so would so would be army paint a blue tone. I really want the ends of the fingers here to be the hottest spot on the arm. Um, I did carry this on on the other hand, but I didn't make it as bright as uh, this one. And this is Temple Guard Blue and Off White by Model Color. I do end up glazing these up much further uh, with the off-white at some point as well. Um, really trying to bring in that sort of blend of dark metallic to a really bright sort of off-blue white. Um, I think that is just pure off-white on its own. Uh, glaze towards the ends because uh, there's nothing else it really could be at this point. I mean, you can't really keep going up from white. But uh, I never used white really. I think I used it in the last video. I'm not a fan of using pure white because there's nowhere to go once you've painted just pure white. So off white will usually be pretty good. You can tone it down, bring it back up. Now I uh, ran out of different 
washers and filters really from Games Workshop. So I've started using scale color. This is navy blue. And immediately after using this color, I wish I'd been using it for a lot more stuff. Um, their paints are absolutely amazing. Um, I love them already. Um, when we get to 1,500 subs, I will have done a um, Talon paint, paint engine from uh, Dark Elder or Drakari. And uh, we'll be giving that away and it'll be painted completely in um, scale colour. Because we have a uh, set for that. And we'll put, it'll count as a review for sets as well. Now this is scale colour navy blue and El Dandil Violet. I'm sorry about the pronunciation. I'm not used to the names of these new paints. So it's sort of a 50-50 mix. These steps are kind of unnecessary, but uh, I wanted to start putting some colour into these ribbons that separated it from the rest of the model. Well, they look like ribbons, I don't know what they actually are. It's supposed to be some... I don't know, they're metallic, so maybe it's melted metals or something. Now we're just using the El Dandil Violet by Scale Colour. Now what I was trying to do was do a universe thing here. Don't do it this way with the patches um, unless you're going to make a large patch of colour. I made that mistake and what you're going to see in a minute is me making that mistake but I've left it in because the colours I'm using are the right colours. The technique is the wrong technique so we'll just sort that out in a bit. That's not going to be an issue I will explain that as we go. Now I'm using Games Workshop Zarius Purple as you can see I'm putting that on in patches that was the wrong way to try and do this galaxy it looked really tatty and uh, I didn't like the look whereas what you should do is just find a corner on uh, one of these bits of ribbon and start glazing it into there until you get a nice smooth transition from the blue metallics to the purples that's the way it should be done now we're going to use Jean Steeler purple you will see me in a minute once all this is done just fix it up and it'll be a uh, it'll be fixed up uh, so gene steel the purple will then be blended over the top of that and if i'm thinking about it now in hindsight the best thing for me to do would have been to cover the actual katan in mascol and then just airbrush through some scotch bright or brillo pad to start doing the galaxy effect um i'll probably do that on a tank or something at some point and uh, do a video of that as you can see the bottom half looks much better than the top half of that ribbon So now we're on to Gene Steeler Purple plus Elf Skin Tone by Game Color. It's all bringing the, you know, the clouds you get in the galaxy, the big dust clouds, trying to bring in that sort of color. Um, trying to bring a bit of orangey pink to it. As I said, if I'd done this with an airbrush and some Scotch Bright or Brillo pad, it would have looked the right type of patchy and everything. Um, it's an extremely difficult thing to do with the paintbrush I discovered. Then we're going to use that same mix and just add a little bit more elf skin tone. I did start putting the patches back on because, you know, I wanted the clouds to look a bit sporadic. Um, you can also see I've put dots on the top half of that thing, sort of an experiment. Like I said, I'm going back and forth with this, uh, this model, trying a whole bunch of stuff I've never tried before. And hopefully by the end of the video we'll have all learned something, because I, I know I have. Now this is Wolf Grey again by Game Air and all I'm doing for the stars instead of the dots because I thought that looked crap to be honest um, tiny little X's using a Winsor Newton series 7 I believe um, triple zero um, they don't really show up that well on camera but the idea here was to uh, do a whole bunch of these in a pattern spread out then add a bunch of washers then do a whole bunch more. I just ran out of time with it, you know, being a, I ended up finishing this video on Friday, so I may tweak it up some more and then start posting it on uh, Facebook at some point. There's still quite a ways of this video to go. These aren't actually that difficult to do. They're just time consuming and the weather was not helping with the brush because it's such a small amount of paint that it, um, just was drying really quickly even though I was using a wet palette and that's on the edge of the uh, paintbrush and that's what I've got so far and what I'm going to do with the rest of the ribbon is uh, continue that and fix up the top part as well 
again like I said if you're gonna do this and you've got an airbrush use those colors and that technique but do it with the uh, with the airbrush and some Brillo pad broken up so you can spray through it and after that I decided I'd add even more elf skin tone to the previous mix of Jean Steeler purple and elf skin tone again airbrush it would have been it would have been perfect it would have blended over those um, stars and everything quite quite easily now you don't have to do all your stars as X's you can put some dots here and there but I find they just they just don't look right I mean you know with, with the scale of the paint it can look like you've just spattered paint on the model and that's never a good look that's why I kept repainting the whole thing now we're going to use those uh, two scale colors again and you'll, I'll be using a technique you've seen me use before I put on two washers and then I blend them on the model so that'll be the uh, navy blue going on first bringing the um, dark color right down to the base because I uh, wanted it to be nice and dark at the bottom uh, give some transition and then that's the Eldandil violet and we're just going to blend those two on the model this also gives a tone to all all the um, stars as well and that's how you end up putting them in the background and in the foreground you just paint some new ones on over the top now to um, blend the rest of that robe with the previously done metallic work we're just really watering down that navy blue because I thought it worked really really well and it would carry the rest of the blue colours on um, and it did work really well actually um, they work really well with the metallic colours as a wash um, I really like that, I'll be experimenting some more with those as you can see I started fixing up that ribbon so we've got some nice purples where there's cosmic dust and then the the whole thing carries on into the into the metallics and I had to use a uh, black background at this point because my camera would, uh, would not focus and I wanted to show you the work properly or at least as best as I could. Um, there's a lot of details, so the camera was having trouble focusing. I still wasn't quite happy with it, though. I thought those oranges were quite distracting, and I was really enjoying the um, the blues and the purples. So that's what it would have looked like if I left it alone. Um, and then uh, I sort of went over the top um, today and yesterday and decided I would do lightning bolts coming from the center of his head making the center of his head like the only star instead of having the one in the chest so he'd have like a sun or star in his forehead and that's just um, elf skin tone mixed with the amanthia red by model color just to brighten up that center part and I thought that gave a pretty good look um, the lightning bolts were done in wolf grey and then highlighted with a off white in points to sharpen them up a bit as you can see I'm having a lot of difficulty getting that camera to focus on the face I also used um, the wolf grey and off white to start highlighting the face because once the lightning bolts are on it seemed a bit off so I um, started highlighting the face and uh, like um, that was where the most energy source was or something like that um, and obviously, as you can tell, I've started taking away the um, the amount of orange and everything in the middle. I just found it too distracting from the model. And um, I also carried that on with the face, guys. Um, I got the original blues and started blending those wherever the Amanthia red was, and started making them making them look a little bit more metallic. Um, sorry for all the stumbling today, guys. It's, I'm really late I've been working on this all week as well as everything else and uh, as you can see I prefer it this way um, I hope this video really helps you guys there's a lot of interesting techniques and, and color patterns and schemes with this one in the end I think he's not too bad um, there's some things I would change about him but at least he looks different on the battlefield um, well, I, hope, I hope you enjoyed watching this and enjoyed watching me make mistakes and clean them up and try different techniques. If it helped, definitely hit that like. Hit subscribe button if you've not hit that already and the bell so you don't miss any other, any other videos that we've got. And uh, share with all your friends, guys, because we're making these every single week. So Share with your friends, let them see what we're doing as well. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.